and we can be successful. Okay, Gan, you'll, you'll go first on the next one. Uh, how will you keep new precinct committeemen engaged in the party? You know, okay, that's just a continuation, really, of, of that last uh, question, in part because, you know, four years ago, we tipped the model on its head. You know, it was a top-down, and it now is a bottom-up approach. And that means that our precinct committee men, um, they, they mean more. They are more engaged. We have, over the last four years, empowered our precinct committee men. You know, it is, it is no longer just about stuffing envelopes, right, or knocking doors. It is beyond that. And, and we need to continue that momentum in terms of, of engaging our precinct committee men, empowering them. They have a real voice. It should not be that our elected officials um, are, are dictating. They ought to be listening to our dictates. We, we should hold sway over them, not the reverse. We cannot just go back to being envelope stuffers. You know, it, it's got to be more. So, we are the party, we are the voice. That ought to be the loudest voice in the room in terms of our leg legislators. We need to be the voice, and that comes from empowering our precinct committeemen. Okay, Barry, same question. I think he only gave me about 10 seconds to answer that question. The stronger the precinct committeeman is, the stronger the party is. Most of us serve as precinct committeemen without real opportunity to have an impact. But we believe we can. And as we're empowered, then the, then the, whole, the whole central committee will find great strength. It's, a, it's an unusual, I guess I used up my 10 seconds. It's an unusual thing to me to see a time from when we begged for precinct committeemen to where we are now, where we run against each other to serve as precinct committeemen. I really believe that the party should select its candidates. The way we do it now, our candidates select us. I'm sure there's a format that could be put together that would enhance the party and its representatives who serve us in, who serve us in government. In our county, we've come up with not a novel idea, but it's been brought forward that we'll watch the legislative bills that are before the government, we'll put them on a board, and then when our legislators come to our central committee meeting, we'll inquire how they feel about each of those bills. Thank you very much. Thanks, Barry. Uh, Barry, you'll go first on the last question which is what will be your approach to uh, enforcing the party rules? Oh, good luck. <laughs> Here's an interesting question. If the governor has the right to select, he's the governor of all the people of the state of Idaho. If he has the right to choose our chairman, why wouldn't he have the right to choose the chairman for the Democrats? If he has the right to choose our chairman, why do we have an election? So the rules have been put together for the most part by people like ourselves. And if we operate within harmony of the rules, then all of us have a fair chance. If we don't like a rule, we can change the rule. But whatever the rule is, we should be in harmony with that rule. Thank you. what would be your approach to enforcing the party rules? You know, I think that um, in the past, uh, sometimes some of what happens in the party is a moving target. And it is about time that we level the playing field. When we all know the rules and the rules are applied equally to everyone, then we can engage in debate, we can engage in activity, we know what the rules of the game are, and we can play it well, right? But if we don't know or they're not followed, you know, we're, we're handicapped. We're handicapped. And so I think that we have to, um, we have to expect, at a minimum, that, that those rules are going to apply to everyone, to level the playing field. 
you know, and I guess secondly, I think that, you know, the rules are, are there that, you know, we, we appreciate the rules, we respect the rules, you know, but we, we have input on the rules and there's interpretation of the rules and I think there has got to be a fairness. When there is fairness, when there is transparency, um, then, then, then great, we all want to be involved. When there's not transparency, when they're a moving target, we can't be effective in what we're doing in the party. So the bottom line is those rules have to apply fairly to everyone, each one of us, no matter what camp we may be in. And, and we have to know what those are. And so we've got to have this level playing field. Okay, thank you. Give them both a uh, round of applause. Question from Neil's party. I'm sorry. Neil repeat the question. <laughs> the question was, what are they going to do to make sure that the rules are enforced? Okay, why don't we? We understand everybody wants answer. the rules to be followed. Yes. Right. But what are you going to do to make sure the rules are enforced? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'll make a comment on that. I want to weigh in on it too. What what could help the new chairman uh, hugely to enforce the rules if all you folks know the rules and you you drive the issue home? And I think we learned that through the school of hard knocks. But okay, let's let's uh, give each one uh, 45 more seconds and and. Uh, I I hope you won't scold me too bad for not coming back to that same question. Because I want to talk about the governor for just a little bit. <laughs> at the time, at the time I was listening about Barry Goldwater, we had a governor in the state of Idaho named Bob Smiley. From the time of Bob Smiley serving our state as governor to the governor today, we've been through many. It's my feeling that Governor Otter is easily the best governor over that 50-year period. I don't want you to get any idea except that if we got it, somebody's going to be our governor. And at the moment, and for the past 50 years, Governor Butch Otter is my favorite. Thank you for your time. Okay, again. You know, um, I apologize, Lori, if I wasn't specific enough. Um, I will say this, you know, uh, I'm a mom of six, you know. I, I hear it all the time as I am you know, be the referee. This isn't fair. This, you know, I so and so hit me. I didn't hit that, you know, refereeing. You know, I think that we all inherently want fairness. We want it when we're this big and we want it when we're this big. And so I, I as chairman would make sure that those rules are are recognized and acknowledged in a fair and balanced way. I think that we have to have that level playing field and, and I intend to be respectful of the rules first so that they apply to everyone. You know, I think they have to be followed. That's why we have them. You can't be effective in what you're doing if, if, if you know, you cannot anticipate at least that there's this set of rules. You can't play the game. What game can you play without, you know, knowing the rules? So I think fairness and fair play and level playing field will be the way I operate. Thanks. Okay, thank you. All right, we're going to move on to the next uh, offense that uh, Rick wants to weigh in on. I would like to recognize a few people tonight. So if I could have uh, Billy Norton and Liz Nickham and the, the 4-H uh, club to come and Terry Shelby, please. If you could come forward. Terry Shelby. Uh, there, there's a real special person, my wife. She couldn't be here tonight. She's very sick. She's had long-term illness. But my wife, Vera, has built me a permanent doghouse out in the backyard. But, no, I'm just kidding. But I just want to thank her. Uh, many of you know I sacrificed a lot of time from the business and home to help restore our republic. And that's why we're here tonight. Uh, 
I want to thank my friend and fellow patriot, Liz Nickham. She has been um, one of my best friends, and many of you know, uh, in talking about rules, we, we basically get dragged through the mud every two years in our county, but she stays with this. A lot of people have jumped off the ship, but I want to thank her. And I want to thank my, my friend, Billy Norton. She's helped make this possible and stood by me. And these young children here tonight uh, volunteered their time from the 4-H club to help us all, so I want to thank them. And I want to thank my good friend and fellow patriot, Terry Shelby. He's helped set up all this tonight, uh, transport chairs and everything. Thank you, Terry. And I'd also like to thank the group from the Sea to Store in Buell, a natural marketplace and bakery. And uh, let's thank the Bermuda Cowboys for the music. And lastly here, before I turn it over to Representative Hart, uh, there's a group of special people, some friends that I recently made. Uh, but I just want to introduce the new Blaine County Central Committee. They successfully overtook their central committee through hard work, which really didn't even exist. There was no elected precinct committeeman in 2010. But many of you know that Blaine County is the Socialist Republic of Idaho. <laughs> but there is a hard root, uh, working group of libertarian, Republican, constitutionalists that are going to try to take back their county. Blaine County folks, please come forward. Let Scott Chain wants to just share a few things with you. He was essentially the team leader up there that helped them run campaigns and successfully uh, win their precincts. But here's Scott. Thank you, Rick. Thanks for putting on a good show. This is good class. Tom and the band are awesome. They're really good guys. We, we, we took over Blaine County. We formed before the caucus, and we were all 2008 Ron Pollard, Pollers, and some of us were 88 Ron Pollers. And we, you know, we had already been shafted once, but we signed up again. And uh, we came together before the caucus, and we formed as a kind of a liberty, a quasi-liberty group. And uh, we got together, and we banded, did some campaigning, and then we went out and uh, did the caucus and realized that the, the, the bust-in voters uh, from Romney had far many superior, superior numbers to us. But nevertheless, we had a second place showing, we did really good, and uh, we went on from after that. And, and, then we, uh, and then we decided, okay, if we're really gonna make some change happen, we gotta infiltrate this thing you know, at the county level and start at the grassroots level and get in and do this. So I think we had eight out of 14 precinct county, Liberty, Ron Paul-minded people step up to the plate and run for precinct committeemen in their, in their respective districts. And uh, we, we won just about all of them, you know, and it was awesome and we took it over from that perspective. <laughs> And uh, we had our county convention. We put our, we put Mr. Freeborn in as our uh, county chair. He's he's a beautiful person. He's very liberty minded. He's going to do great things up there. And we got some other great people in uh, Mitch and Stacy's our committee man and woman. And, and we just kind of we, we we basically had a royal flush and we did it. And that's awesome. We're we're very happy to to be here standing in front of you and and announce that you know we can infiltrate and do this kind of thing. And I don't mean infiltrate in a in a. Yeah, militaristic. Okay, we'll just make, we can get in and do this. And uh, but we we are diehard liberty. We're liberty people, guys. We're not Republicans. We're not Democrats. And we're not trying to save the party. And we're not trying to fix it. And we don't. Quite honestly, I can't speak for you guys. I think we pretty much feel business as usual is can't be resuscitated. And it, it just cannot. Yeah, it's 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 just time. With all due respect to those two candidates who are up here speaking, and I know that they want to get in there and they want to fix it, they want to get that machine, and they want to torque it and twist it and make it better than it was. You know, it's we're beyond that. We're beyond trying to salvage the system. You know, we are here for freedom and liberty. We're here for that. We are. We're sick of it. Right? I mean, this this government has been infiltrated on both sides, and it's. 
I mean, we know it. We're not. There should be 5,000, 50,000 people here tonight. There really should. There's a, why have, this hasn't caught on fire, right? Why hasn't this caught on fire? Why are we awake? Why is everybody else at Burger King tonight? Well, they're uh, watching football. That's why. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, and, and and my friend once told me said there will be no revolutions with full stomachs. And maybe he's right. I mean, maybe we. Can, Tom, sorry, we can put you out of business for a while. But uh, no, we're we're in this. To, you know, and, and listen, let me tell you guys. Ron Paul, great. He becomes president. We. It's a clean. You know, we can do wave a magic wand with Ron Paul, and all of our problems are solved. But Reality is, you know, even if, you know, really, if he had made it, would he have made it? I don't know. I don't know, I want to think, but probably not. So we have to make this fire happen, and, and we're making this fire happen. But I say break the rules. Break the rules. Don't listen. You know, the rules are put there to keep us confined. And if these rules, you know, limit our movement and limit our ideology and limit our, limit our philosophy, then break them. You know, I, I'm, you know, the rules have, have won for 90 years. The rules have, have kept us in line and they've kept us in the trough. It's time to break it. It's time to take this country back. It's time to take it back. You know, so we're, we're with you guys in Bay County. Look for the float. Okay. And thank